Okay, let's do this. So, I am utilizing the iPad mini as my uh, instrument and using the USB-C right into it. You can, you know, record in and out of it or you can sample or whatever you want to do. But most of you have seen me use the AU plug-in, which is the radio. Well, I added to that the Flux Pro, which is a great app. Kind of is like the iOS Shaper Box 2 from Cable Guys, if you know that one, which I love and have on the desktop. Um, I'm still learning. I just literally just got it. I have the Mini Flux that was free, I think it was, and enjoyed that. But I think the Pro is a little bit better for me and gives you a little more, more options. You could stack them probably. I didn't even think about that. Like if you have the free version, you could probably stack them and have like multiple of them going. I don't, you know what? Let's just try it right now. Why not? Uh, we'll put two of the pros in. How about that? Let's do two pros and we will pick up some of these miscellaneous weird ones. Throw one in. Let's just do that. Now we have two going. Oh, wow. Really crazy. I like it, though. Okay, so check this out. It allows you to shape the sound. Let, oh, the camera just moved. Weird. Sorry about that. I don't know why it's shifting on me. Sorry about my big hand sitting there. But I want to adjust it for you. All right, cool. Check it out. So I like this because you can just sample whatever, right? So of course, you know, if, if you watched any of the later videos, I'm using the SP. So one of the things in the SP that I'm enjoying is uh, this ease of sampling. By the way, I'm using, this is, I have no sponsors. I don't do sponsor. I've never done a sponsor before in my life. But anyway, um, Soundcore, little speaker. I usually would use the studio speakers, but our studio monitors. But for right now, we're just gonna use that guy. It's a little bit quieter and I don't have to worry about powering on everything else, computers or anything. So check it out. I sampled off the radio, pulled in Flux, came up with two filters. I believe Flux Pro allows you to have an A, there's an ABC, right? But I believe, I may be wrong, that it allows you to use two at a time, two different ones. Cause you'll see here like, okay, look at A is this right here. B is this. And C is this, but look at the titles of them. See, those are the same, even though they're different. And this, well, no, that one says the same. You know, I'm not 100% sure on that. Let me re go back to that. Just not 100% sure of what it's doing. Um, again, I just got the thing, so I'm still trying to figure it out. I need to look, at, look into it deeper though and find out what it allows me to do. Can I run two at the same time? If somebody knows, please do comment in the in the comment section below. Um, I'll have to learn more about this app. But the point I'm making is, is just you, and I've shown this before, using effects with this radio to just give you a different sound. Well, you can actually do this kind of in the uh, SP also as your external source that works not only for your mic and your guitar and for the um, plugins in the back. If you hit it, you'll see right here it says input. And so you can use like a vocoder, like I'll show you what that sounds like. Vinyl crackle, little SP-404 vinyl sim. Lo-fi. I don't really use this, but but you can. Right? So you see the point. You can use this as a source. All right. We're going to turn that off for you now. 
or remove the radio, whichever one you got. On the SP, I would do that. If I'm just on here, I'm just going to remove it there. All right, so I sampled in something. So here's what it sounds like. Okay, then I looped that out. Wow, and then I went in and added some drums, which is simple on here. Just, I mean, you know, for what it's worth, it's simple. Shift, input, go into your card, sample, find your drum folder, plug in the drums, right? Add it to a pad. You'll see I added four drums here. Exit out of all that. Why is loop on? I don't know. So if I look at uh, pitch need here, there's this, you can shape it. Whatever you want to do. All right, I'm not tripping it. So you can, and you can run effect, like effects on there, right? So let's see, let's do, what am I gonna do? Where's that EQ at? So you notice I hold that down, then I find the pad that is recorded. That is, so I'm gonna put the equalizer on it. This is just for this purpose of this kick. Trying to see if I shaped it. See, it's not even playing right now, so I have to put it on channel two. I think I did it on two, right? Yep. Now it's on. Okay, so there we go. So equalizer on. I'm not going to resample this, but I'm just showing you that you can do that if you wanted to. So I am going to put the 303 back on there. But, all right. That's if you wanna do all the extra sounds, sh uh, shaping, and you can resample it. So here's what it, I'm gonna turn the drums back up. I turned them down. But for right now, let's just put them all up. We can always shape or turn it down later if I need to. All right. So now I need to I, put, I did a tap tempo on this, so what I did was I looped it with shift, 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 <laughs> shift, uh, tap tempo, which is pad 11. And then you can one, two, three, four, right? All right. So I came up with, I put it at 110 originally because I was tapping faster. I'm going to do it a little bit at 122. And the reason is I'm gonna double the tempo just to make it. So we're gonna do it at 122. And then I'm gonna go into this pad and we're gonna change the speed. So manually change this to 122. Actually, let's put this at uh, 61. You don't have to do this this way. I'm just, just my way of doing it. If you decide to ever use SP. Okay, then I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna turn the original sample down to, you'll see I have it on manual. 
I didn't even do that. Gate. I'm gonna gate the uh, gate this. All right. So shift mute groups. Oops, you gotta exit out of here. Forgot about that. Shift mute groups, and I'm gonna put these on a mute group. It doesn't matter which one you put these in. They're not corresponding, but some people may choose. I mean, like if I'm this is separate from something else, then I'm gonna use two different mute groups, right? There you go. All right, so. All right, so resample. And we're gonna sample over this pad, so hit. It didn't it didn't record by the way just so you know all right i have it on loop but i'm gonna take it off loop and the reason why is i'm gonna use it in i actually don't need it if we're not gonna record here so let me just delete it let's go into pattern i am going to record a pattern but i want to change the bpm or not the bpm the bars i think two bars is actually probably Probably plenty. I usually don't do quantize, but for this purpose, because it's a loop and I'm just trying to get the loop right on time, I'm gonna set the quantize to 100 for just this one. On the drums, definitely not, but okay, then hit record again. This might be longer, this might delete. This might be longer, this might be four bars. So let's go record, hit record settings, and let's change it to four bars. Because it is a, a faster tempo. Okay, so I didn't think about that at the time. Record, oops, I messed that up. Pat. Accordion. I'm probably off there. Yes, I am. Exit. You see me button mashing now. You like, <laughs> yeah. Don't get the SP if you don't like bus button mashing. That's my motto. Delete. All right, because it is definitely about button mashing. All right, let's re-record. It looks like it is two bars. I, so I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna go in, hit record, record, edit. We'll leave it at two bars. Um, let's do something different. This might work better. Hit remain and we'll do the two bars as a, a TR rec, which is basically sequencer. Hit record again and you'll see it moving through the two bars. So because I know it's a two bar loop, I'm just going to put it on the two bars. It feels like it's like longer than two bars. Like that's not working because of this. And it may be because of this tempo. Like maybe I should drop the tempo down to that 110 spot where I was at, maybe. Cause it's not fitting right so i gotta figure that out oh, not that excited so we're in pattern hit record record settings i think it should be one ten that's fine we'll leave the tr hit record again and just punch it in at one ten see how it goes So it's a little, it's closer to what it needs to be, but it's still not on. So let's leave it in and see if we can change the tempo. 
It needs to be faster. That's it. So this is one of the things cool about the uh, step in sequencer. If you're not 100% sure on the tempo, is you can hit the record settings while it's still in there and then adjust it. And now the tempo is a little bit better. And watch this. So let's say you, you like that. So, okay, we're gonna exit out of there. We're still in the record ability. I just hit that and we'll go over. It's a little loud for my taste, so I'm gonna change those. Better. So. These are like 30. the velocity a little louder on the kick. At least on the first one, right? That's cool. Just doing step sequencer stuff. Of course, you can get real detail and put the start point, adjust the start points on these notes so that they sit a little different. I'm not a step sequencer person, but I can use it. Or let's say these don't do it for you. Maybe do your first kick in here like that because you like the way that hits. And then you can come back and record the ghost kicks, right? Like manually record it in. But if you're gonna do that, I would say copy over so you don't mess up this one, just in case. So then go, um, go ahead and hit, uh, I think it's, uh, Resample. No, it's not resample. What am I doing? Exit out of that. It's just copy over to here. Wait, this is wrong. Go back in pattern mode. Exit out pattern mode. Okay. It's record and pick the track that you just did. My brain was totally. Oh, but wait a minute. Record. Change the setting up here before you do that. So click remain, now go back to here. All right, sorry about that. Now hit record. I messed up already. Did it again, good Lord. 
Oh. Mess up, shift, pattern up here. Like I just did. Each one of those notches represents your points where you plugged in something, a hit. So if you just shift back, shift pattern select here, you see the undo, it'll just undo it. Cool. And check it, he could come over here. Plug in pick another one. I might use a trumpet before I use this. I don't have my MIDI connected to this, so I can't show you this part here, but uh, I'm gonna do it inside of here by doing this. I don't even know what key this is technically in. So let's just go C just to be safe. And we'll just use a uh, major key. This because I really don't know what key this is in. I have not checked. I like to put a little bit of haul on it, a little reverb. Like so. Okay. Turn on the external. You actually gotta connect this, by the way. Grid. Okay, don't wanna connect with you. Let's switch this out and use a trumpet. I think it would sound better just with this particular one. may come in time for Roland to figure this out but I think that Roland should do is allow you if you're gonna if you're gonna make this thing so great as it is right and I, I think it is really a great tool at least allow the person to record in an instrument live while the pattern seat select is going so you in theory you can but it doesn't work well here's why I say that because if the pattern is going and you go back and you go resample and play into here, it's going to resample what you're playing and the pattern at the same time. So it doesn't, it's not allowing you to record in and just use the pattern in the background. The only way you can do that, and I think I showed it in another video, the only way you can do it is you have to resample the pattern back to here, make a loop. Then when you start the record, you have to switch it to external. So you're in pattern. Pattern is playing, right? You have to go, I think it's resample. No, you can't resample why it's pattern. I'm sorry. You have to send the pattern out. So, so in other words, play the pattern, turn off the pattern, right? Come out here. No, that's not it. See, I'm, see what I'm seeing? It should be a little bit easier. So, resample this pattern and then you have to go outside of pattern mode and hit this pad I believe it is is 
then go back in the pattern and hit it. Did that do it? I think that's what that did it. Yeah, so now you have to, now you gotta go chop it. Like who's gonna really, let's be honest. If you can copy a pattern, I'm gonna truncate that. So listen, this is what I'm trying to say to Roland, like seriously, like seriously. If you can copy a pattern to another pattern, why can't I copy a pattern into this uh this mode over here or whatever they call this mode my brain can't even think what they call it sample mode why can't i just copy the pattern to the sample mode then it's already looped where it's a four bar loop it's already looped right that makes more sense to me than trying to go back in and make sure this look at this make sure this pattern hits it's probably off Let's see if it loops. That's pretty good, but you can tell it's off still, right? So the only way to fix that You see what that you see how I recorded it twice, which is why I did that, by the way, in case you were wondering. Why did you let it go through twice? Because it doesn't automatically just shut off like it should. If it would automatically shut off, I wouldn't have to time this. Especially when I'm just trying to bring over a loop. Okay, so there you go. Then truncate that, right? So now the loop, let's start at the beginning, should be legit there and should work. Because I got it as close as I can get it. So now if I hit... See, it works pretty good. But what I'm saying is that's the frustration is that it's it's not the perfect loop like it should be. All right. So, so now you can record into here, right? But you got to go. So you got to go resample. You got to pick this pad. Hit the record here. Change this to what it should be, which is uh, what was it set at? One hundred six. So like, why is it doing that? One sixteen. Okay. All right. So go to shift tempo. Should be one sixteen. That's correct. You see what I'm saying? Like sometimes it's frustrating. So. I think if you hit record, select the pad for recording. So we're going to record to this pad. No, that's not it. Now I got to go review my own stuff, right? Because it's hard to remember. That's why I don't use it this way as much. I prefer just getting all the samples in it and come up with the idea and then record into Ableton because then I can just record in and adjust the loop as I need to be and it's already ready for where it needs to be. But anyway, um, so there is a way to do it. I'm still a rookie. I'm gonna call it like that. I'm just a rookie. Um, but yeah, it's it's a way to start it to record in. So you, you, I think it's resample if I remember right. Select the pad for recording. So I'm recording here. Yeah, that's what it is. So resample, select this pad that you're gonna record to. Hit this, but before you hit the record, go to this. Wait, is it shift? Shift here. Weird. Maybe a shift. It's supposed to let you. <laughs> okay. Press the pad to start. I don't want to press the pad to start. Because I'm trying to show it the external instrument. So hold on, let's see here. If we go here, no. Let's just press it and see how it goes. It 
Hit record again. So that's what I didn't want it to do. I don't want it to record onto with this pattern going, but it does that, right? And there is a way around that. It, it does work. I've done it once, but they can make that so much easier. First of all, let me just copy a pattern to the sequence and make it already a four bar. If that's what it was a four bar, just just let me copy that pattern to to one of these sample pads. That's pretty simple. But anyway, the SP has its quirks, like anything, right? You, it's a sacrifice. It's a hard hardware, right? So it's going to be a little bit different. Um, So I don't know why I didn't do what I was wanting it to do. So here's this one. All right, I got the four there. We're gonna delete this. Oops, cancel, exit out of there, delete. So it should let me, maybe it's record, maybe that's why. Select the pad, hit the record setting, no. I'll figure that out on the next one. Anyway, this video is 31 minutes. Y'all know I don't do videos this long, but anyway, just some of the cool features you can have. The most important one is that you can sample from the iPad and you and Mini and this Flux Pro. Get the Mini Flux if you can't afford, I think it's like $11.99 right now. Wait for Black Friday if you, it might be a little bit lower. Get the Mini Flux for free to play with it a little bit um, and stack them to make different sounds. You got all that at your fingertips on the iPad. Use Koala if you don't have the SP. You don't have to have the SP. It's not a necessity. It's more of something that I personally wanted to, to learn. Um, but use Koala in here. You can sample directly to Koala and do the same type of thing. All right. Have a good day. It's been fun. Post comments in the our ideas in the um, comment section. Love hearing from everybody. I'm out.